What's up, guys? Uh, Entity 126 with you today. I'm a guest today in this very beautiful channel. I'm coding with Craig, and I'm here to share such an, an amazing, um, well, if I have to say, um, a very, very, very interesting project I've been working on. Um, I'm a first year student who's doing computer science, and I've been trying to get my edge on this well, tech world and uh, I built something that I think would be very very useful um, as a useful start into like getting into very complex um, things that have to do with programming and technology none of those things are neural networks so I built a neural network and I'm gonna show you how I did it this is not a tutorial though I will link all the videos that were helpful to me in the description so do check them out and i encourage everyone to start building um, their own work but what do you need to know um you need to know basic programming you need to know your object oriented programming your, your loops all those fundamentals what else do you need to know you need to know a basic math differential um uh, differential calculus uh, you need to know at least um like very basic maths now the approach I took was to make um, a segments in a scatter plot whereby I have four different segments. And I think you can see on how I was doing this and like separating it into four domains on my code. I'm using Python to code this and I did not use any external libraries besides matplotlib and numpy. So I defined all of these um, domains so that I can plot out the the graph according to where these um, points lie on the domains and I, I'm writing conditionals to kind of plot them out according to that domain so that I can use a neural network to discern where, where each point lies in a sense. It's more of like binary um, classification but it's not instead of two you have four but i soon scrapped this because it was counterintuitive i was using 100 points and this was my first neural network and it felt very intimidating and besides having four things to decide on is actually kind of overkill so i, I thought maybe let's just go with only two um inputs um, well well two inputs and like two discernments and like two types of classifications so I just went with the binary classification problem which I would take the x input or the x coordinate as the first input the y coordinate the second input and the type as well the output that we expect do we expect to get a 1 or a 0 so I would use these binary values to discern um, a certain type of point it lies on and here I'm creating the data for um, well, the training data. And as you can see, the training data is smaller from the first example I tried to go for, whereby I had 100 points. And I think for the first neural network, my first ever neural network, it's actually good because I can focus more on making the thing work than cleaning up the data and trying to make it look nice. But here I'm just using um, a list um, and those two lists that I have above, although it looks very, it looks very clunky and heavy and it doesn't look very neat. I think it's the way I was able to organize my data in a nice, concise way using the indexes and calling them into the data list. Um, it was actually nice because um, I, I, I can think you can see here, I printed out data of coordinate zero, zero and it gave me an output um when i when i printed it gave me the the output of the first um first data in the first row and first data in the first column and then i went on to define and my, my weights my weight one weight two and my bias with a random uh, integer i think we're just using the normal distribution then I define my sigmoid function, which is an activation function for this problem specifically because it's a binary binary classification. It, it, it either has to be zero or one. So the sigmoid is perfect for this. 
Now, to to understand how this thing works, I will have a video in the description to how where can you learn this. But um, in what I have to do is to get the cost as low as possible, and to do that, you do something called optimization in math and calculus, and that's why I said you need very basic knowledge in maths and it will involve you knowing how to do partial dif differentiation for each um for each variable in a sense yeah and that's what i was doing but um where i was a bit lost was the chaining i did get the hang of it after watching the tutorial again again link in the description and i, I was able to discern on how to get the derivative of the cost of each of each the parameter we are using then i went on to define the learning rate and we are going to update the parameters which is a very important step this is where you see where your parameters actually are going good is the cost of each parameter turning out nicely is it approaching zero or is it just well staying constant or is it getting worse so that's how you can see and this process was very tedious i, I don't want to lie like tweaking the parameters to match what i thought was supposed to be perfect well well i think when i tested my data for the first time it looked good enough but i wanted to tweak all these hyper parameters if i'm not mistaken like the learning rate and the number of samples to see how much can i get um how low can i get how low can i get from uh, the pie um <laughs> why did i say five bro oh i'm so sorry guys um the cost function how far can i get with the cost function and honestly speaking i i, I did find a good sweet spot but i just kept on tweaking and um, i'm sorry the graph don't appear on the recording but the graph did show me that it, it was very jittery I, I i admit it was very jittery but it was very close to zero and here I'm like reducing the sample size to 500 so I can see how the trend goes in a well, smaller sample rate. It was good, but I wanted like I wanted it to be very, very precise. So I kept on tweaking and testing hyperparameters. You don't have to do this if you're working with big neural networks, by the way. I just wanted to figure out the bare bone of it and to see how it works on a mathematical level without using libraries like tensorflow and pytorch um which i will use if i'm doing i'm making bigger neural networks which i will but i focused on the math behind it and the technical skills that go behind making neural networks and yeah what i did now was to track the cost and see my cost my my cost function the derivative of the cost i think or the cost itself and I found out it was very, like a very, very small value. And I wanted to start testing the neural network if it's working. And surprisingly, it did work very well. Um, it did, it did work very well. I just scattered the data so that I can show you where the point is and what the, well, the computer decided it lies on which part according to, um, the classification well with this case i think it's red and blue um which part does it fall in and i think this project gave me a lot of skills that i wouldn't have attained if i did not work on the neural network as close to the machine as possible if i can say that um and as close to math as possible just give me an understanding on how things really work in the neural network and i'm really proud of it guys um i really encourage you to check this out i encourage everyone to check out um neural networks to check out how these things work and i encourage all of you to work on a project that may seem daunting my neural network worked <laughs> and I, it was my first time doing it and i did it i did it it worked and I encourage each and every one of you to go out there, test things out and work on projects. And well, you'll be surprised what you can do. And yes, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. 
that this was entity one two six i'm a guest in coding with craig like and subscribe to the channel um i hope i'll be invited more in the channel to share my progress um hit that like button hit that subscribe button guys i love you so much have a good one peace